Hello everybody! Today we're taking a look at Inside Out 2. Two inside, two out. No, that's terrible. Directed by Kelsey Mann and starring the voices of Amy Poehler and Maya Hawke. We are once again inside the head of young Riley, who is now 13 and ready to start high school. Also, ready to start puberty. The puberty alarm that they teased in the first movie has gone off, and with it comes a whole new set of emotions. Anxiety, ennui, envy, and embarrassment. And briefly, nostalgia, but the rest of the emotions remind her that she's not really supposed to be here for another 10 years. Riley joins a summer hockey camp, which turns out to be a very emotional experience. She desperately wants to make a good impression so she can join the school's hockey team next year, but is also trying to have one last hurrah with her friends who will be going to a different school. And through it all, Joy is trying her best to keep Riley happy and on track, but anxiety keeps sending her off the rails. I very much enjoyed the first Inside Out. I think it is one of Pixar's best. This one I don't think was quite as good, but I still enjoyed it. The inside of Riley's head has gone through quite a few changes. Instead of just a handful of core memories, we now have a whole slew of memories that kind of form the roots of a tree. And this tree symbolizes Riley's sense of self, or her belief system. Not necessarily in a religious sense, but more how she sees herself and the world. They also have a habit of taking any overly negative memories and just tossing them into the back of Riley's mind. Just go ahead and repress all those bad memories. That can't possibly have any repercussions later. And all of the new emotions immediately make themselves known as soon as that alarm goes off, and they were a lot of fun. I especially liked Embarrassment, who doesn't have very many lines, but his expressions are hilarious. Of course, the old and new emotions immediately clash, and Anxiety basically becomes the villain of the story. As in life. And I was a little surprised that there wasn't any kind of romantic emotion involved. You would think that would come along with puberty. I know you can't have horny as an emotion in a kid's movie. That would be a bridge too far, but surely there was a PG way to do it. There's also a point in the movie where we're introduced to one of Riley's early childhood memories, which is a character called Pouchy, which is basically a sentient fanny pack, and he becomes a recurring character throughout the movie, and he is very funny. We do get to see some new aspects of Riley's mind that were not present in the first movie. There's a point where the five original emotions have to journey down the stream of consciousness, which is a literal stream running through Riley's mind. And at one point, while they're floating down this stream, Riley makes a really stupid comment, and this massive earthquake happens and a huge canyon opens up right in the middle of the stream, and I knew exactly what the pun was going to be before they even said it. It's a sarcasm. Sarcasm. Sometimes a pun is just so terrible that you have to respect it. We also see a sort of memory vault that houses some secret memories that Riley doesn't want anyone to know about. This is where we meet Pouchy and we find out that show that Riley liked as a child, she still kinda likes, but don't tell anyone. It also contains a deep, dark secret that is never brought up again, and I don't know if that was meant to be a one-off or possibly something they're saving for the third movie if they make it. And like the first movie, the events going on in Riley's head translate very well to the events going on in her actual life. And anxiety plays a pretty big role in that. Riley is trying to make a good impression to the coach and the members of the varsity hockey team, and that's kind of freaking her out. She's also worried about not seeing her friends again because they're going off to a different school. And all of this culminates in an actual panic attack, which... I've never had any experience with, I've been very fortunate in that regard, so I don't know how accurate the portrayal is, but it certainly looks scary. The voice acting is still very good across the board. Uh, disgust and fear were both recast in this movie, but honestly, I didn't really notice. And that's not meant to be a knock on the original voice actors, but it does kind of reinforce a point that I've been making for years. You don't need to have big names on the marquee for an animated movie. The kids aren't gonna care. Just cast people who can do good voice acting. That's all that matters. And after seeing this and going back and re-watching the first movie, I think Phyllis Smith is really the standout performer. She just nails sadness. And I thought Hawk did a really good job as Anxiety. She could be both funny and scary at different times and played the role very well. And I'm sure I don't need to tell you the animation is fantastic. It's Pixar. It'd be weird if it wasn't. If you've seen the first movie, you pretty much know what to expect here. There were a few minor things that I think kept this from being quite as good as the first movie. A few of the ideas they came up with seemed kind of like retreads of ideas in the first movie. The stream of consciousness, for example, felt a little too similar to the train of thought. And the sense of self is really just the core memories, but multiplied by a thousand. And overall, I didn't think it was quite as funny as the first movie. It still had some good jokes. Pouchy was hilarious. I did appreciate the triple-dent gum callback. 
it just felt like the joke density wasn't quite as high as Inside Out 1. But that aside, I still thought this was very well done. If you enjoyed Inside Out 1, I think Inside Out 2 is definitely worth seeing. If you haven't seen Inside Out 1, I don't know that it's absolutely necessary to see it first, but you should see it anyway because it's a really good movie. And that's all I have to say about Inside Out 2. Till next time, take care.